Good morning, everybody. Happy Easter to you on this beautiful day. Let us join together, celebrate it in glorious majesty. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the dead of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. 
They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place that they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement and seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Happy Easter. Let us go ahead and say a prayer and jump on in. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, grant us serenity to accept those things we cannot change, the courage to change those things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. I was coming across this article recently. It was talking about the early church. And part of the article was just that, was naming the fact that, that this community was so dedicated to Jesus, this early church was so dedicated to, to Jesus that they would do anything um, to, to keep him around. And that, that, was, that was the basis for these resurrection stories. Almost like a, um, almost coming from the theme of love is blind. Love is so blind that it would just do anything or say anything or believe anything. Um, and, and certainly in this day and age, that plays pretty well for our culture. We like to have facts. We like to have reason. We like to have logic and all the rest. But if you, if you look at the other side, um, first of all, we have a paradoxical faith. So the idea that um, you, know, you can prove paradox is very difficult to do, first of all. And the other part about this, if you really just want to go to our faith itself and how it, would you prove it, a, a lot of theologians say that the proof is in the fact that there are so many different experiences, exactly that the fact that it is so disorganized and looks to be all over the map, not because people were trying to go ahead and create or concoct some kind of um, harebrained idea, but more, more the other way. In other words, if they were trying to concoct something, they would have gotten together and put together a much better argument. And there would have been more, um, would have been more uh, similarities in the like, but the reality is every person's experience is different. Whether it's Thomas in the upper room saying that until I put my finger in his side, I will not believe. Or Peter, when he's out on the lake, after he said, I'm going to go back and go fishing, he's returning to his old life, and there he encounters Jesus. Or in Mary Magdalene standing outside of the tomb uh, later on was where she encounters Jesus. And, and of course, in, in Luke's gospel, they actually um, meet Jesus after they looked in the tomb and the like. And so you have all these different experiences, whether it's the road to Emmaus or the like. And then you have these women today, Mary, Mary, and Salome, and, and they, they all, um, they just run. They don't, even, they don't even connect right away. They don't even put together the whole deal. So, and that's the proof, if you will, is that everyone has their own experiences going their own different ways. And so I think we have to start there is just to get that part. And, and, then, and then from there, look at what are some similarities. And the first one in, in our paradoxical faith is this notion of an empty tomb. Uh, think about that. And the women are going there today to find the body of Jesus. And, and, and the paradox is that, that the very thing they are looking for, they don't find. And the very thing that they don't find help them, helps them to find the very thing they're looking for. I hope you got that. Uh, but in other words, you know, and there's one point in time where one of the angels says, I think it's in Luke's gospel, why do you seek the living among the dead? You know, because this is what we do. And we're going back in, they're going back to this tomb, going back to find Jesus. And, and he just isn't there. And instead we get an empty tomb. And again, it's no wonder that uh, we don't like the empty tomb in the West, because think about what the tomb represents. The darkness and the loneliness and the hollowness and the emptiness and the and the silence of that place, a place that's full of memories of sadness and shock and the like, why would we go back into that place? Wouldn't it be nice to stay out afar and see if you couldn't prove something about the resurrection? And yet that's not what happens. 
All the stories talk about this empty tomb and the significance of it, and even more so the entrance into it. You have to go back into that darkness, back into that place where these events happen, back to where that place where there is death in order to find life. And if we don't, if we don't engage and don't investigate and just stand off from afar, it's no wonder the resurrection will look like it's just a story concocted by a bunch of people centuries ago. It sort of reminds me of the, the story of, the, uh, of, this, of this cruise ship that was going along in the middle of the ocean. And as the cruise ship was going along, it passed this remote island. And all the passengers are looking at this remote island and uh, all of a sudden, out of the palm trees, races this man, this wild-eyed looking man with his big, huge beard, coming by and he's raising and waving his arms and all the rest. And one of the passengers says to the captain, Captain, who is that man? And the captain says, I don't know, but every year we go by here, he goes nuts. Yes, I did. You know, so the first part there is just that you can't you can't investigate from afar. You have to enter in. And so Easter is, you know, paradoxically, this day of great joy and all the rest is calling us to re-enter the tomb, to go back into those places where we have felt that we've given up on, where there's nothing left, where there's just basically barrenness, because that's where resurrection will happen. And so the empty tomb is there for us, and it, it, it's there as a, a memory for, for a lifetime, that every time we go through difficult times, and we remember that, that wherever that we find an empty tomb, we will find resurrection. And so that's that first part I think is essential. And then the other part about that I think is also essential is this idea of learning how to, how to, if you will, almost be quick on your feet. Learning how to be able to, if we will, ditch our ideas and all the rest for something different. And if we don't do that, we'll never find resurrection because resurrection is always, always, always going to be mysterious and it's not going to be solvable and it's always going to be a surprise because that's what resurrection is. It is a surprise. It is something that shocks us because it's it not supposed to happen. And so the key to resurrection, if you're going to experience, you can't be going ahead and holding on to all kinds of stuff because if you do, there's no room for anything else. And so it's always about pivoting, about going ahead and changing course and the like. And, and all these stories have that, this notion of changing course. And so when whether it's the men on the road to Emmaus who, once they encounter Christ, go back, or whether it's Peter going out to the lake, or whatever these stories are, there's always this sense of, of if you will, again, going back to this idea of, of, of pivoting, of, of learning how to, how to adjust, you know, because and if you hold on to old ideas and hold on to old ways of doing things, we'll never experience resurrection. It's a, a case in point, like when Thomas says, unless I put my finger in the side, he doesn't ever get to do that. But again, he doesn't need to because he's able to pivot and see something different. And we, we have to figure out that even these women today, at some point in time, they pivoted. But not, at that moment, they weren't quite ready. And so resurrection is always about this engagement, about being willing to change course. And so the question for all of us on this Easter day is where, where are we being called to? What are we holding on to? What are we stuck in? For instance, as we get ready to go back out of this pandemic, perhaps we're thinking that we have this idea of how things are supposed to go. And the reality is that's okay to have those ideas, but chances are at some point we're going to encounter an empty tomb. We're going to encounter a place of broken dreams, things that didn't quite go well. And if we're able to pivot and see it for what it is, we can, we can find resurrection. It reminds me of the story of these, these two friends who were walking their dogs one day. One had a Dalmatian and one had a Chihuahua. And so as they're going along, they, they smelled this great smell coming out of this brand new restaurant. So the, the first guy says, hey, we should go to that restaurant and, and get in some of that food. And uh, the guy with the Chihuahua says, well, we, we can't do that. We have dogs. He goes, oh, don't worry. He goes, go ahead and just, uh, go ahead and just you know, uh, take my cue. So the, he, he puts on a pair of sunglasses. And he walks into the restaurant and he says, I'd, I'd like a meal. And the, um, the owner of the restaurant says, you can't have a meal here. Uh, uh, there's no dogs allowed. And the man says, dogs? He goes, this is, uh, this is my seeing eye dog. And the owner says, a Dalmatian is your seeing eye dog? He goes, of course, everyone, everyone's doing it. Dalmatians are very popular seeing eye dogs. So the owner's like, oh, okay, I didn't know. So um, his friend puts his glasses on, comes on in. He says, I'd, I'd like some food. And uh, the, again, the owner says, that, there's no dogs allowed in here. And he says, he goes, oh, what do you mean? This is a seeing eye dog. And the owner goes, oh, a chihuahua is a seeing eye dog? And then the man goes, a chihuahua? What? They gave me a chihuahua? That's pivoting. 
And, and that's what resurrection calls for. It calls for us to be able to, to be able to think on our feet, to be able to move in different directions, to be open to what God is doing. And you have to know that God is never going to do exactly what we think we're spo- God's supposed to do. That's the way it goes. And if we're not able to pivot, we won't have resurrection experiences. And we'll keep ex- in, instead encouraging, uh, if you will, just things that aren't living and aren't doing well. And so, and so resurrection is about call, calling us to go ahead and, and be ready to, the, again, think on our feet, move in different directions and all the rest. And again, so as we are here to gather in this, this time of resurrection, let us celebrate God's presence in our life. Let us celebrate the fact that, that we have the capacity to, to always, always be, a, be a, a, just, a, just a thought away, just an experience away from resurrection. And to understand that when we do that, um, our whole lives can change. And so it's really not about being love, being blind, you see. Um, it, it's way more than that. I found this great uh, quote by uh, G.K. Chesterton. And he was talking about love being blind. And he says, love is not blind. That is the last thing it is. Love is bound. And the more it is bound, the less it is blind. And that's really the case for resurrection on this day. Resurrection is not about love being blind. It's about love being bound. And when we are bound to Jesus Christ, the one who on this day resurrected and came back from the day, when we are bound to him, we will always have the opportunity to experience resurrection in any given situation we are in. And so with that, alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Through the great Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and all his works, and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers. I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself. I will with God's help. Will you strive 
for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all of your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship and love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and great mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled back from the tomb. And it came to pass, while they were wondering what to make of this, that behold, two angels stood by them in dazzling robes. And when the women were struck with fear, the angels said to them,
with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly, I bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who has sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the high. At this time all across our homes, I invite you to sit, kneel, or stand. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made for us yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God, the Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over for suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for the people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive these sacraments and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. My friend, the gift of God for the people of God. Take him in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. And together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And on this glorious Easter, we know the truth that Christ has died and risen. He has conquered death. And because of that, we are given the peace and knowledge beyond understanding that keeps our hearts and minds in the knowledge of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you on this day, on this beautiful Easter, and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth now in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let's hear it. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Take care, everyone, and a blessed Easter to each of you.